Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on using variables in SQL Server integration services. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll start by showing what the tutorial is aiming to achieve, and then go on to look at how to create variables within the SSIS variables window. We'll then look at how to use variables that you've created within a row count transformation, and then go on to look at how to create a script task to display variable values, firstly within Visual C Sharp, and then doing the same thing again within Visual Basic. So let's get started. Before we look at variables, I thought I'd show you on this tutorial what we're trying to accomplish. I've got here a spreadsheet called Finalists, which consists of all the X Factor finalists from the last nine series, it being a reality TV show in the UK and in America. And what I want to do is import them into integration services and display how many rows there are. So to do that, I've already created a package. It consists of two control flow tasks. One will count up the number of finalists and one is a script to display the results. Before I run that, I'm first going to close down the Excel workbook because when I run that in integration services as a project, it would actually crash if the Excel workbook was still open. So if I now run this package, you'll see it's imported the finalists from the Excel workbook and displays the, there's 109 of them in a script. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. So if I choose OK to clear that and stop running the package, what I'll now do is show how I did that. You can see I've created an additional package called Variables Example, which consists of a single control flow task to count the number of finalists. And if I double click on that, you can see the data flow consists of just a single Excel data source. What I need to do is take the information from this into a row count transformation. But if I add one of those into my data flow and try configuring it, I'm going to ignore this message which appears at the moment and just choose yes. You can see that the row count transformation depends on having a variable in existent, and I haven't got one. So what I'm going to do is cancel out of that. For the moment, I'll delete my row count transformation, and what I need to do first is create a variable. Now the way to create a variable in SSIS is to click on this little blue eraser symbol to display the variables window, which I can then drag down and dock wherever I want on the screen. I'm going to dock it at the bottom. What I can then do is add in a variable by clicking on this icon on the left hand side. And by default it will be called variable. So I'm going to call it number rows instead by typing that in. The scope of it is within my package called variables example and the data type is going to be an integer. These correspond to the .NET data types. In a later tutorial I'll look in more detail at data types and how to convert them in SSIS. But for the moment a 32-bit integer will do very nicely and initially it will be set to zero. Now you can, if you like, in this variables window, look at system variables too. So I could click on this icon and choose to show all the variables built into SSIS. And when I choose OK, the list will be considerably longer. In later tutorials, I'll have a look at what some of these things mean, but for the moment they're just confusing. So what I'll do is click on the icon again, choose not to show my system variables, and then choose OK to confirm that. So I've now got a variable in existence and I'll hide that window just for the moment. What I can now do is create my row count transformation to store the amount of rows in the Excel source in my variable. So to add my row count transformation, which should now work, I can click on it and drag it into the, into the data flow window. I'm going to rename it and what it's going to do is count the rows, so that's what I'll call it. And then I can drag the data from the Excel source to feed directly into the count rows destination. And if I click off that, I'll now need to double click on this count rows transformation to assign it to a variable. And that's what the message is telling me. If I click on the drop arrow, you'll see that the variable name is called user colon colon number rows. That's to distinguish it from system variables, which begin with the word system. So I can select that from the list and then choose OK. Now, if I run this package, firstly, I'll right click on it and I'll set it as my startup object. And if I now run it, we should be able to see that the data is coming from the Excel source and feeding into that variable. 
So it's taking a short amount of time, but there's a green text appearing. And you can see there, 109 rows have gone from the source into the destination. What I'd now like to be able to do is to go back to the control flow and add an additional task after the first one to display the results of that variable. So what I'll do is show how to create a script task to display the value of a variable. For this part of the tutorial, I'll add the script task using Visual C Sharp as a programming language. In the next part of the tutorial, I'll do the same thing using Visual Basic. So to add a script task, we can find that in the common section. And if you add that into the control flow task, and then rename it as usual. So I'm going to call mine show number of rows. And then what I'll do is make sure the two tasks follow on from each other by dragging the constraint from the first one onto the second. What I now need to do is actually tell Integration Services what the second script task should actually do. And I can do that by double clicking on it to go into this window. Before I edit my script, there's one important thing I need to be able to do. In order to be able to refer to a variable within my script, I need to first specify whether it's a read-only variable or read-write variable. Now if you think about it, the number of rows has already been determined and read into my variable. So all that my script needs to do is to read a value in it and display that on screen. So I would claim that it's actually a read-only variable I want to pass into my script. So I can click on the three dots and confusingly it shows me all my system variables as well, which is unhelpful to say the least. But if I scroll down here, you'll see they're actually in alphabetical order if you ignore the system and user prefix and I can find my number rows one there, about halfway down, and tick it to confirm I want to be able to refer to that within my script, and then choose OK. And you can see it shows up there as a variable that I want to refer to. For my script language, the default in integration services is Visual C Sharp, so it looks like Microsoft are finally beginning to uh, concede that C Sharp is more prevalent in the internet than is Visual Basic. So now I've assigned my variable, I can click on the Edit Script button. And what will happen is Visual Studio will complete, create a completely separate project just to hold the script assigned to this task, which is why it's taken quite a long time to do. So it's gone into my package, and what I'll do is just hide Solution Explorer. And for the moment, I'll hide this SSIS toolbox. Now, if you scroll down, the thing to look for in the script is a, a subroutine or a program called main, because that's the one which will automatically run when you first go into this package. It contains a comment, which I'm actually going to get rid of, saying what to do. And it contains something which will set the result of running this task to success. And all that does is tell the calling package that the script has run successfully. What I need to do within this is to display a message. And you can do that, C sharp, by typing message box dot show, and then typing in open brackets, and then typing the text of your message. So I'm going to start with a bit of text saying there are. My intention is eventually it will say there are 109 rows. What I then need to do is join that text together so I'm going to use a plus symbol to do that. And what I now want to do is refer to the value of the variable called number rows. To do that, I'm just going to press return to make it easier to read. And then I'm going to type DTS, which is a prefix for integration services. If that doesn't sound like much of an acronym, it helps to remember that SSIS used to be called Data Transformation Services. And although Microsoft have changed the name, underneath the scenes, as is so often the case, they still refer to it by its old name, DTS. I can then type a dot in to bring up all the various parts of that. And the one I want to refer to is the list of variables. So I can select that from the list and type a square bracket to refer to the object within that array that I want to actually refer to. So I'm going to refer to the one called number, number rows, which if you remember, I've passed into this as a read-only variable. Now that's actually an object. And so what I need to do is type a dot in and then say which of the possible properties of that object I want to refer to. And the obvious one is its value. So what that will do 
is bring in the value of the variable called number rows into my text string. And what I'm finally going to do is add on the words number rows. Sorry, the words rows. And then I can put a semicolon because all lines in C sharp have to end in that. So what I'm hoping that will do is display the message there are 109 rows. Now I could, if I like, save this and build it, but what I'm going to do instead is just close down the project with this memorable name by closing out of Visual Studio altogether, clicking on this cross at the top right hand corner. And what that will do is automatically check that my script makes sense. If when I choose OK, I don't get an error message at this point, it means it's successfully built my script and it should now run. So let's try now running my package. If I click on the play tool to run this, what should happen is it should import the data from the Excel source, store the amount of rows, the number of rows in my variable called number rows, and then run this script, which will automatically display the value of that variable. So let's see if it works. Fingers crossed. So, and there's my script message appearing. There are 109 rows. So if I choose OK to confirm that, and stop debugging. What I'll now do is show exact how to do exactly the same thing, but this time using Visual Basic. If you've been watching the previous part of this tutorial, you'll see that we created a script to show the number of rows in Visual C Sharp. What I'm going to do now is to show how to do exactly the same thing, but this time using Visual Basic. So I'll delete that task, and what we're going to do is add it back in again. So you can find the script task in the comments section and there's the script task icon and I can drag that into my control flow window. What I'm going to do is change the name of this task and so what it's going to do is display the number of rows. And then what I'll do is make sure that the two tasks follow each other in the correct order by dragging the green arrow down from the first one onto the second. What I can now do is edit my script task by double clicking on it to make sure that it does the correct thing. Before I go and edit my script, I need to make one important change. I need to make sure that my script can successfully refer to the value of a variable called number rows. And to do that, I need to either assign it as a read-only variable or as a read-write variable. Now to do this, you need to think whether you're going to plan on changing the value of the number rows variable within the Visual Basic script. And I don't think we are. I think we're just going to read the value of it and find out what it is, but we're not actually going to make changes to it. And so it should be a read-only variable. So I can click in that section and I can click on the three dots and change the name or set the name of the variable to be used. It's a little annoying that they're all listed uh, to include the system variables, but if I scroll down far enough, you can see there my one called number rows, and I can click the tick on that and choose OK to confirm that I want to refer to that within my script. Now just before I edit my script, there's one more thing I need to do which is very important. This part of the tutorial is going to use Visual Basic. It's interesting, as I mentioned earlier, that Microsoft have lost confidence in their own language and realise now that perhaps C Sharp is taking over in the world. Personally, I still prefer Visual Basic, so I'm happy to be using it. What I can now do is click on the button to edit my script, and what Visual Studio will do is create a completely separate project to hold my script. And when I finish making changes in that project, which is taking quite a while, while to create, I can close it back down, and I'll be back in my original package. So I don't for the moment need my SSIS toolbox, you can see that the project name given to this has been generated by the computer. They clearly don't want you to know about this or change it. And you can see within my script, there's a subroutine called main, which will always be the one to run when I first open this package. It contains a comment, which I'm just going to get rid of. And it contains a line telling the first package that the script ran successfully. So I'll leave that one in. What I'm going to do is add in a line of code to display a message explaining that there are 109 rows. So I can do that by using the message box dot show command which always displays a message on screen and the message I'm going to display is going to begin with the words there are. What I now want to do is join onto that or concatenate onto that um, 
the number, the value of the variable called number rows. So I can do that. I'm just going to put in a line continuation character there. Strictly speaking, that's not actually needed in Visual Studio 2012, but all habits in VB die hard. And then I'm going to display the value of the variable called number rows. To do that, I first need to start by typing in the letters DTS, which stands for Data Transformation Services. And as I explained in the previous part of this tutorial, that is what integration services used to be called in the old version. So even though they've renamed the package as SSIS, internally it's still called DTS. I can then type in dot in, and that will bring up the collection of variables, which are all the variables I've passed in. There's only one of them. Within the brackets, I can refer to the variable called number rows. And then I need to put a dot in to specify that I'm not just referring to the variable as an object, I'm actually referring to the value it contains. So I've now got the message, there are 109. What I now need to do at the end is just finish it by typing the word rows in. So I'm hoping when I run that script, it will display the message, there are 109 rows. I've got an error message on it because it's in converting it from an object to a string. So what I need to do is just add in something here to take my variable value and convert it to a string. Because otherwise, I'd have been joining together two strings of text, there are, and rows, with something in the middle, which was just a variable object. So now I've completed my script. I can close that entire project down. And what it will do at this point is save my changes to it. And when I choose OK to confirm that script, the fact that it's not going to come up with any errors is a very good sign. It means it's not only saved that script, it's also successfully built it into what's called an object library. So I think I'm in a position that I can now run my project. So when I click on the play button, what I'm hoping it will do is count the number of records in the Excel data source, store it in a variable called number rows, and display the results of that using my script. So let's see if it works. Fingers crossed again. Click on the play tool and it's counted up the number of finalists and displaying it in a message box on screen. So I'll choose OK to confirm that and stop debugging. And that completes this part of the tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on integration services variables. You can find lots more training and other resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.